Welcome to Intermediate Programming. This is the first video in this series. My name is John Duane. If you watched any of the videos from my series Introduction to Programming, welcome back. If you didn't see any of those videos, that's okay. I'm going to spend a little time in this first video describing what this series will cover and who it is right for. I will say a little bit about myself so you'll understand my point of view and where my emphasis will be. And finally, I'll describe the format of these videos. In other words, how the videos will be arranged. If all that sounds good to you, then stick around and enjoy the series. So what are we going to cover? Well, in a way, this is a continuation of the Introduction to Programming series. We will go back and cover some of those topics in more depth. For example, we had several videos on user interface. We'll do more there in this series. There are scores of controls that one could place on a Windows form. In the last series, we only covered a few. In this series, we'll cover several more, such as list boxes, combo boxes, and progress bars. In the last series, our coverage of in-memory data structures was limited to arrays. In this series, we'll cover other essential data structures offered by VBA, such as the collection. Besides expanding on topics introduced in the last series, I'll introduce some new topics. The biggest of those topics will be object-oriented programming. This is a critical topic, especially if you're thinking of learning one of the more modern general purpose languages, such as, such as Java, or .NET. Uh, another new topic will be sorting and searching. We will demonstrate these familiar functions as Excel operations wrapped in a VBA macro. Then we'll show how to do these operations in code where the Excel operations are no longer possible or even appropriate. And as we did the last series, there will be demonstrations of how code would look in other programming languages. For me, the best language for that is C Sharp because you not only see the C language syntax, but you'll also be exposed to the .NET libraries which apply across the board in VB.NET, C Sharp.NET, ASP.NET. Uh, you'll learn uh, or you'll want to learn um, Java or C Sharp if you really want to go a whole lot farther in, uh, in general purpose programming. Uh, and if you do want to learn them, there's some great online resources for that. But in this series, I'll just give you a glimpse of C Sharp. Who is this video series for? Well, first of all, I'm going to assume a certain amount of programming experience. Not too much, but you need a little bit. Uh, you should be familiar with the macro recorder, uh, variables, data types, looping, file input, output, if you watched the last video series, you're all set. If you want to build on that level of knowledge, you're definitely in the right place. Uh, but what if you're an experienced programmer in one of the C languages, for example, and you just want to learn how to write VBA macros? Well, if you watch the first series, you're already there. Uh, what you'll see in this series is how to code operations you're probably already familiar with. I think it's important to know who I am before you begin investing the time in this series. Um, if you watched the last series, you have some sense for this, but let me be specific. Uh, I am a self-taught programmer who works in the financial services industry. I started out with Excel macros since I was surrounded with Excel worksheets every day and we relied on them so much. By reading books and researching problems on the internet, and more recently watching instructional videos, I've learned VBA in depth, Visual Basic 6.0, VB.NET, C Sharp.NET, and SQL. I have some familiarity with C and C++, but not enough to write anything sophisticated in those languages. Uh, so I'm a big fan of the self-taught programmer, and I think you can learn a lot via online resources. 
Uh, you'll also notice in my examples and demos a bias towards business situations. Uh, you won't see any gaming or graphical artistry or you know mapping applications in any of my examples. It, it's going to be very business oriented. Finally, the format of each video will usually be a discussion of the theory and then some examples where the examples get more difficult as we go on. It is in that part of the video where you should stop it. Try the example yourself, rewind if necessary, and then continue. Uh, I limit the videos to a maximum of 15 minutes. This keeps the material in easily digestible chunks. And at times, I'm going to move fast. Um, if I'm going too fast, sorry, but really just stop the video, catch up, and then start it up again. So, I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get started. In the next video, we will explore some new controls that will make your user interfaces much more user-friendly. See you then.